Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. Our word for today is lamb. And today is uh, Palm Sunday, if you all didn't know. And um, uh, let's begin our service by standing and singing hymn number 82, Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how we made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my road. Spirit, and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and And I love that. 
where the dearest can best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear into dark Calvary. So I cherish the old rugged cross. He confessed, it's a strange thing to pray because someone has to die so I might live. Carl's dilemma highlights a basic truth of scripture. God uses death to bring life. We see this in the story of the Exodus. Born into slavery, the Israelites languished under the oppressive hands of the Egyptians. Pharaoh wouldn't release his grip until God made it personal. Every eldest son would die unless the family killed a spotless lamb and slathered its blood across the, their doorpost. Today you and I have been born into the bondage of sin. Satan wouldn't release his grip on us until God made it personal, sacrificing his perfect son on the blood-spattered arms of the cross. Jesus calls us to join him there. Paul explained, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. When we put our faith in God's Spotless lamb, we commit to daily dying with him, dying to our sins so we might rise with him to new life. 
We express this faith every time we say no to the shackles of sin and yes to the freedom of Christ. We're never more alive than when we die with Jesus. And the prayer is, Jesus, your death brings me life. Help me die to sin today and live my life through you. At this time, I'm going to ask Brenda to come and sing our special, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. <clears throat> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to know. Did I, did I miss a line? Were you tell me, did I miss a line? Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. How I love to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, I've learned to trust in Jesus, and from sin and self to cease. Now from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior. Psalms 47 and 8. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. And that's in the Old Testament in Psalms. A verse which says about the same thing is in the New Testament, too. Hebrews 10, 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Let's pray. Dear God, we pray that you will guide us with your Holy Spirit as we teach and learn your word. We ask that you will give us knowledge that will help us to understand what we see, that you will give us wisdom and counsel us as we live our lives so that we will have blessed lives and so that we can bless others with your truth. We also ask 
that you continue to heal and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When Adam and Eve sinned, they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves for clothes. But God gave them coats of skin. Genesis 3:21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. But why? What was wrong with the fig leaves? Two weeks ago, we learned as we studied the story of Cain and Abel and their offering, that God did not respect Cain's offering of produce. But we did not know why. In this comment that I found on the internet by Dr. Henry Morris, the Institute for Creation Research, Dr. Morris explains that God, now this is his understanding, and if I had a, a Bible verse that said it directly, I, I would show us that, but, but I, this is my understanding too. God killed two lambs to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness when they sinned in the Garden of Eden because, and he, and he gives us several reasons, and I, I circled them and, and I numbered them so I, I wouldn't forget. First one, clothing is important in God's plan for human beings. Number two, symbolically speaking, clothing must be provided by God himself. Man-made aprons of fig leaves will not suffice. Number three, our righteousness are as filthy rags. Number four, we learn in scripture, he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Number five, in order to do this, the innocent blood of the sacrifice must be shed. In our starting Bible verse last Sunday, Revelation 3.18, we, we have a dog with us today. We let people bring their pets, and, um, and we, we've had rabbits, and one of our, our dog's friends just walked in. That's why you're hearing that barking. In our starting point Bible verse last Sunday, Revelation 3.18, Jesus counseled us to fill our lives with His gold, to put on his garment and to anoint our eyes with eye salve, his, so we can see. All this indicates to me that Jesus is God's sacrifice to God's own law for a group of people that he calls his sheep, us. Romans 13, 14 in the New Testament, Paul tells us, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Hebrews 9.22 it teaches us almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. 
All right. That brings us back to our starting point Bible verse. And, and I have, the, this is the, the uh, basic picture here is a starting point Bible verse, but I, above volume, I have a red cloud. Okay, the book, the volume of the book that David sang about approximately a thousand years before Jesus was born is the Old Testament. That's the volume of the book. And our second red cloud, it is written of me. The me there is Jesus. And in Hebrews 10, 7, Paul shows us that Jesus is the one that was spoken of. The Lamb is a familiar figure in the Old Testament. I pulled out some verses to illustrate that. When Isaac, when Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac on Mount Moriah, which is where they believe Calvary was uh, located in, in uh, later years, Isaac asked, where is the lamb? Okay, in other words, he looked around, he saw they had the wood, they had everything they needed for the sacrifice, but they didn't have an animal. And Abraham answered, God will provide himself a lamb. In the Passover, uh, during the time of Moses, they sacrificed a lamb put its blood on their doorpost, and that was their protection. And God would pass over that house and not do the damage to the house that, that was uncovered. Exodus 12, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, and said unto them Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. Exodus 29, 38, we know that the, the lamb was still being sacrificed. Verse 38, now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb they would offer in the morning and the other lamb they would offer in the evening. And not only is Jesus written about in the volume of the book, we are the sheep. Isaiah 53, 6, almost seven, or around 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah spoke of his role and our role. All we like sheep, that's us, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, that's the Messiah, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. But, God cautioned us with examples also. We need to be careful that we get it right. One example that we are given is found in Le Leviticus 10, where we learn about two of Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. I, I do this every once in a while. This is what you see here is the whole 10th chapter of Leviticus. Okay, it's 20 verses long. And, and I show down at the bottom of Leviticus 10 through 20. So this is, this is the entire uh, chapter of chapter 10 of Leviticus. All right. At the very beginning, you see I've underlined Nadab and Abihu. Leviticus 10.1, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, 
took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded not. The next, very next verse, Leviticus 10.2, there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. This, the, this basic sentence appears in three different places in scripture. Leviticus 10.1 that we just looked at, Numbers 3.4 and Numbers 26.61. It is a caution to us. Be careful. Make sure you get it right. Then Moses, the very next verse in Leviticus 10, Moses said unto Aaron, This is then the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron, the dad that just lost his sons, held his peace. We have been cautioned to put God in a special place in our lives. Then some of Nadab and Abihu's relatives carried their bodies from before before the sanctuary and out of the camp. This is a picture of the wilderness tabernacle. And uh, this was the, the, what we would think of as like a church, but, it, but it, it was a temple where God lived. And there was a, there was a uh, uh, protection all around it. And okay, I have an arrow here showing they died before the sanctuary. And that blue over to the right, that was the sanctuary. That was a place where God lived and, and only the holy priests were supposed to go. God had given them instruction regarding the fire and the incense. The fire would come out of the altar where the sacrifice had been offered. My understanding is that they would get um, the fire out of the altar where the sheep had been offered in the morning, and and that was special. And uh, God told them how to prepare for the entrance into the sanctuary. Okay, now the incense according to my understanding, is inside the sanctuary. And somehow or other, they had incense before they went into the sanctuary. Okay, we, we're just doing our best to figure out, you know, what exactly went wrong here. And, uh, but it looks like they didn't get the fire from, from the sacrifice and they didn't get the proper incense God had given them instructions about how they were supposed to do these things and everything was special and sanctified, which means set apart. It appears as if they approached God carelessly and may have been drunk. Leviticus 10, 9. This, this 10th chapter. God says, do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. Then he also cautioned them in the next verse, and put difference between holy and unholy, and between clean and unclean. God expected them to be a certain way. And there's a lot of Bible that has been um, written to, to explain all that. Okay. I put this collage of pictures together to show the various parts of the wilderness tabernacle. And there was instructions with everything here. 
And this, this doesn't even begin to cover all that went into it. God put all this in place to give him a way to be with man until Jesus came to accomplish all that he came to accomplish. That was around 1400 BC, 1400 years before Jesus was born. Around 1400 years later, John the Baptist, the messenger, who came to prepare the way of the Lord, announced, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he was speaking about Jesus. The Lamb of God finished his work and changed all of this, this tab wilderness tabernacle, the temple system, people being killed, all that went into this, changed all that to this. We've got a lamb, and we're with him. Then said they unto Jesus, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. We're supposed to believe and put our trust in Jesus. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, as we leave this place, we pray that you will strengthen our hearts for you, that we will obey you, keep all that we know to do, so that your kingdom will be strengthened and your name be praised. Thank you for Jesus. He did such a good job. We know that we're going to live eternally because he finished what you, him, and the Holy Spirit determined to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you.